As you may be aware, there is considerable talk in the news about the very powerful position that Dingbat Marjorie Taylor Scream here has ascended to as a result of her leverage within the GOP House of Representatives. And in large measure, apparently, this is because of her alliance with yet another dimwit, Kevin McCarthy, the current leader of the House. And then there's the fact that we have to look at the planetary cycles. And separately, you can find videos on Kevin McCarthy that I've put together recently in which I show his 2023 is anything from very uncomfortable to a total hellscape because of the Saturn transit. And now we can take a look at Marjorie's situation and we can see that as Saturn leaves Aquarius and enters Pisces, which it will do March 10th, it then makes its way toward degrees that will directly square her sun. Her sun is at 558 Gemini, so it needs to reach those degrees. And you give a degree on either side, that would be the minimum. Typically it's more, but being conservative, we say somewhere in mid-April, Saturn locks into the square and it doesn't really let go until mid-August because it'll go right by the degrees and make a station at seven, which is well within range of a six degree sun, especially because it's a station. So this whole period is very Saturnian in nature, which forecasts restrictions, problems, setbacks, lots and lots of no, no, you can't do that type of energy. Now, to be fair, the Jupiter transit will somewhat ameliorate this issue because you can see here that Jupiter from third week of April and into early May goes to these late Aries degrees which correspond to where her Venus is. And so this could help having a, a Jupiter transit over your Venus is a nice offset. However, you notice that that happens just before the Saturn locks in. And so if anything, that could be an apparent victory or an apparent opening or some kind of expansion that she thinks is happening, which soon turns into a problem when Saturn locks in and Jupiter is no longer there because Jupiter will go through these degrees fairly quickly, then it'll enter Taurus and it'll never come back to these degrees in Aries. So essentially, she's stuck with the Saturn indeed, even when Saturn backtracks away from her Sun degrees by a basic astrology rule, it will not let go of this Sun uh, hit until really next spring. This whole time here, it's not locked into the degrees, but it's still an aspect, although it's more so an aspect in here and also in here. But either way, there is a tremendous amount of Saturn in her life during this period. And this gets further complicated by the fact that you see here this red swath that represents what I'm showing over here, the Neptune cycle, which in late Pisces is locked into a square to her Mercury. And you have to realize that these planets carry their birth energy. And if the birth energy is dynamic, challenging, that's what they will bring when they're in transit. This Neptune at birth opposes her sun, which by the way, describes her perfectly as a conspiratorial gaslighting creature. You know, Neptune on the low side, and there's no doubt in my mind, this woman expresses Neptune on the low side, much like the orange menace she worships. Same idea, a very corrupt Neptune. So she has that at birth, Neptune circulates, it's currently over here, squaring her Mercury, and she's a Gemini. Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. This is a very intense transit and almost certain to be very problematic for her. So, hence I'm showing it here, and this one extends all the way into the spring of 24, and it's constantly in play at the same time as the Saturn. Also, I have to mention that if you're looking at the natal Saturn, 
at 4 degrees Cancer, squares Pluto pretty precisely, so it'll bring this energy into play when it's transiting, which, again, very, very unhelpful. So, bottom line, we can put MTG in the same bucket as Kevin McCarthy. Both of them have a very complicated 2023 extending into 2024. So, bottom line, good luck with that.